before we move on to anything else, I just want to go over some basic information to ensure that everybody's on the same page because I understand that we have people here from different walk, walks of life. And some of you might not be um, aware of some of these concepts and what they really mean. So if this is too generic for you, just really skip it. There might be something here new for you. So it's up to you. This is just going to be basic. Um, I think it's basic, but it might be new concepts for you. So first I want to start with karma. What is karma? Karma is a Sanskrit word for action. Um, so anything, people think of karma just in the negative, but it can also be in the positive. And when you think of karma, this is actually the the different experiences that you have accumulated throughout different lifetimes that sometimes leave a residue or a memory imprint and that you carry forward in many different lifetimes. That's why the karmic lesson is called karmic lesson because it's something that you have been carrying for more than one, for more than just this time here now. If you don't have any karmic lessons, that means that every time that you go through a life, you are able to accomplish your lesson. If you have, let me give you an example. My, um, my karmic lesson is the number A. The number A has to deal with power. So when I wanted to know when did this originate and how long have I carried this with me and have I been dealing with this for a long time or is it just in this life that I have to work for something that I did in a previous life? And I was shown a life in Egypt where I was a priest, I was a male priest, and I was able to work with energy in a way that I could bring people back from the death. So when I brought them back from being, you know, from dead, being dead, I was manipulating the energy in a way that I was breaking universal um, laws. And because of that, I had to learn in this life to deal with it. So in other lifetimes, I have deal dealt with the different um, lessons, but it is in this lifetime that I am dealing with that lesson of um, working now, that understanding that energy can be used for the positive. But in order for me to do that, I had a very adverse um, initial reaction to my gift because I didn't want to be tricked, and I that's why I have an issue with um, people that overcharge for their spiritual services, people that do things that are very greedy, because I already went through that in a, in a very ancient lifetime, but it's coming up now. Even though it's been thousands of years, it's coming up now. So the karmic life is something that you carry with you. Sometimes it's turned off for a particular lesson in a particular life, but when you really take the initiative to come and work out that karma in order for you to gain balance again, you um, be, you bring in the energies of those memories with this particular lifetime in order for you to work it out. It is possible to be working out a karma that is positive, meaning I was, let's say I was a very good um son and and I, I was the best child ever and now I have to come and be the worst um, child ever because I have to work out both I have to work out the negative and the positive aspects and when I overcome in the good um in the good karma if you can call it that when I was a good child I could have been too good that I didn't have um, a lot of experiences because I always wanted to be the best child ever. Now, as a bad child, I could be dealing with me wanting to be free for once. So there are no negative um, karma. It's just the experience that comes with it. What is it that you have to work on in order for you to be? Because the whole thing about karma is about you being an expression of your soul. So the relationships that you bring forward from other lifetimes could be, you can say in the negative or positive aspect, depending on what you have to work on here, but it's always going to be back, going to be going back to the concept of being. 
because we come here to express ourselves as a, a soul, as an energy being, as part of the creator. So when we express is when we can be. We don't do, we, we become. So the energy that you bring forward from other lifetimes could be positive or negative, and you'll decide how do you express those um, vibrations that you bring forth from other lifetimes. I hope that makes sense. So basically, it's not about suffering. It's about understanding. It's about understanding and overcoming and being an expression of source. So when you really tap into this concept, you understand that if you did something that was not to the highest good of, of you and others around you, you now will come to be an expression of the highest good. And if you have a lot of challenges, it's because you might be tapping into the previous energies when you didn't achieve that perfection of being the expression of the highest good. So now you have to learn how to overcome that energy, those sufferings from previous life, in order for you to con to be and continue to be an expression of source. I hope that makes sense. So this is the law of causing effect. Anything that you do is going to have a reaction. So when that reaction um, comes to be paid, meaning that you come here to incarnate and leave um, and, and go through experiences in order for you to pay, if you if you want to call it that, is because you're creating the result of the reaction. So the cause and the rea and the effect become the 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 real representation of what karma means so this is the law of and the effect of you incarnating here now to um balance out the energies of whatever that you did in the previous life or whatever you need to achieve in this life so if you don't have any karmic lessons you might be picking up more than um, one major lesson because you want to experience more or you might be picking one very specific lesson because you want to master that lesson and it's not a lesson per se in the way that you think okay i'm going to yes the the, the earth is, is really is a school it's a playground for us to whatever we learn in other dimensions to come and put it into practice here that's why it's called a school but in reality is the different expressions of how your soul wants to express to everything inside of you outside of you and for others to see. So we become the ultimate expression of source. And as we talk about karma, it's important for us to talk about the, the reincarnation. We, I think we all know if, if we're here in this training program that we understand that life doesn't end when we die. There is that reincarnation cycle the, the reincarnation cycle is very important for us to understand, especially for those that are known, that are new to this concept, because we understand that when we die, we transition to the spirit dimension. When we transition to the spirit dimension, we release a lot of the traumas that we picked up here. We also heal from the traumas and we also heal and repair ourselves and go through different trainings that we bring forward to the next life. So the trainings are very important and we can find out what those trainings are by going to the Akashi field and by going through um, someone that can read for you the your Akashi records. You can find out the trainings that you bring by understanding what spiritual gifts that you have, by meditating and asking, and really just by being, you can see what makes you come alive. For some of you might be painting, singing, writing. For others might be nature. So you might be going through training in the spirit dimension to learn how to be more of a naturalist, to learn to communicate with trees and animals, to learn about flowers and herbs. You might be going through training to know how to work with the throat chakra or how to work with a sacred chakra. So there are different type of trainings and those trainings have very specific meanings and very specific gifts that you bring forward. And we'll go over that in a future video. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you about the different type of 
healers, abilities, and mediums. And I might forget some of them because I'm, I'm just going to go over briefly. Um, and if I forget, I'll add it to the notes when I remember at the bottom of the lecture here. But I want to start with mediums because mediums are... The medium is just a medium is a channel for us to bring energy from other dimensions in order for us to obtain wisdom, in order for us to heal others, or in order for us to hear spirit, see spirit, communicate with spirit, um, and do things in the spirit dimensions that might not be that are that will be considered supernatural. So the different type of spirits, uh, even if you're in the Catholic or if you know anything about um, any of the different uh, spiritual cultures, you're going to see that there are different type of gifts that um, the, the, the spirit, the source, the God or whoever you want to call it or the different spirit guys can give us those spirits. Um, have specific energies attached to them and they bring forth an energy. It could be healing, wisdom, speaking in tongues. It could be on crossing, on hessing people. It could be the um, physical healing from the point of you like doing something on somebody's body and healing them completely or going into the spirit dimension and doing something for someone that has been trapped in the wheel of karma or that have been cursed and you just do something and magically that person is now aligned. So there, there are different types of spirits, um, spiritual gifts. The, there is also this uh, gift or discernment, understanding different types of energies. Also the, the interpretation of the different tongue languages is another gift. There are many different gifts. So I just, I'm just gonna go over very briefly about what those might be. Now I took some notes just so I didn't forget some of these things because some of the, the different gifts, just because it, it could be a lot. For example, you could have the gift to um, time travel. You could have the gift to astral travel. You could have the gift to remote viewing. You could have the the gift of telepathy. You could have uh, empath abilities, channeling abilities, mediumship ability. And within the mediumship, there are many different type of mediumship uh, abilities. So mediums um, might be one that encompasses a little bit of some of the other ones. So let me start there. So the medium types um, and even the healers that are like, on crossing, on hessing, doing physical healing, all they could be also considered mediums because again, the medium is when we are tapping into the unknown dimension of spirit in order for us to do something that becomes supernatural. So the the gift of prophecy, discernment, tongue, the gift of faith, sanity, science, understanding and interpreting tongue language. Mediums normally are divided into the physical and the intellectual. The physical mediums can move objects. So you might be able to do telekinesis where you are moving energy just with your intention, which is crazy powerful. You might be able to levitate. So there are so many types of abilities that we can tap into when we really go, when we really try to analyze it, it could be a lot, but everybody's going to have different gifts. So you can know be thinking of, oh my goodness, I want the gift of, because it's, it doesn't work like that. It has to be granted to you by spirit. Some of these gifts are only granted to you by spirit. Some of them, you can tap into them because they're generic, like the, like even channeling uh, um, information from above is one of the generic ones. Because you can, anyone should be able to channel and everybody can be an empath if you work on those ability. Now, to channel spirits of very highly, that are very highly ascended, no everyone is going to be able to do that because you have to be granted that gift before you were born. Or whenever spirit source decide that it's time for you to have that gift. But normally, the people that can channel very highly ascended beings are people that are already chosen before they are born. The generic 
gifts that we, we will call them generic because anyone can do it with training, like channeling information from the Akashi field. That's a generic one because everyone should be able to go into the Akashi field. That's a gift, um, birthright gift for everyone that is here on this planet. Just like the empath ability. Anyone can wake up the empath ability because they're the basic foundation. Now, if you have super empath abilities where you can hear others' thoughts, when you can feel other people's pain and feel it in your body and release that energy, those are more powerful abilities. Not everyone will be able to do that because the basic gift is to be an empath, but the super gift is to really tap into the other person's energy and understand what's going on without them having to say anything. So the intellectual mediums can grasp very big philosophical concepts very easily. They, they're they always thinking about ethics and moral concepts that are very big and can really drive someone crazy that doesn't have the capacity to understand. These people are very intellectual, they are going, they're trying to go into the uh, spiritual dimensions that are invisible to most, and they're grabbing information almost like a sponge, and then they can put it in basic terms for other people to understand. Sensitive mediums can feel the presence of spirit. They know when something is around them, which is beautiful. And then you also have the clear audience uh, mediums that can hear. They can hear spirit. They can hear other spirits. And then you also have spirits that are mediums that are speaking spirit. They allow their body to be used as a vessel for spirits to be allow access to speak to through them. So these are known as, uh, I think, um, let's call them speaking mediums because it's, it's almost like when you open your vessel and you allow someone that has been deceased to come through it could also be uh, another type of being that comes through. So you got to be careful here when you're working with the mediums that can channel spirits um, because you have to know really well how to discern energy so you don't allow something that doesn't belong. Now, the channelers are one type of medium, but the channelers can channel information from anyone that has been deceased to very highly ascended beings as well as as well as light beings. So um, the channelers become um, almost like a, not a step up because there, there is no competition here, but it's just a different type of energy that they can allow to come forward because their body has to be very well prepared for them to, they have to be very, um, have a very um, good amount of, they have to be given the gift of birth before they were born because in order for highly ascended beings to come through, they really have to be an open vessel for these spirits to come through without hurting them and killing them because the energy is so powerful that it will be kill, able to kill someone that is not prepared to do so. Now, the psychic mediums are the ones that they can see pictures, images, symbols, and interpret them. Now, the level of consciousness is very important here. The psychic mediums, like tarot readers and stuff like that, if they are not, if they don't have a very expanded awareness, um, if they're not very conscious, they will not be able to communicate to you properly what they're seeing. So someone that sees a belt, let's say, for example, they might tell you, I see a belt, but can they understand what the belt represents? What is the meaning of the belt? So these people... They have to really do their work to study more, to understand more, to meditate more, to tap into the Akashi feel more, because otherwise they're not going to be able to be a full manifestation of what it means to be a psychic medium. And then we also have the dream mediums. The dream mediums are the somnambulistic mediums. They, these people go on, on trance. They could be uh, also known as trance mediums because they can go into Theta. They go into the spirit form as their own. They grab information. They use their, their gift to go into the spirit dimension. And they bring that information down. The reason why this is important is because when, when you see a lot of people go to different spiritual 
uh, practices in order for them to become dream or sonambulistic medium, trans medium. That would be another name. They, these people can go into the spirit dimension. Sometimes when you go into the spirit dimension, it could be very scary. So these people that go into training with different spiritual practices so they can walk through the spirit dimension um, with very specific features, um, drawings in their faces or bodies so they don't get confused by a living being. They have to look like they're dead. So when they go through the spirit dimension, things don't try to bother them and they, they almost like they have to blend in. When you are a dream medium or trans medium, if you want to call it that, it is the sonambula sonambulistic medium. That would be the scientific name. Because you go into Theta and you go into the Akashi, you go through the spirit dimension, you go through the four plane, you go through different... When you go through the Akashi, most of the time you're safe unless you don't ask for protection. But when you go into the spirit dimension... You really have to ask for, for protection and you have to know how to take in the qualities of different animals and things so you can become one of the, the spirits that are on the fourth dimension. Otherwise, it can be very scary because things that don't, that know that you're a live human, they will try to bother you. So these people may lose consciousness when they go into the trance. They might channel as well. Um, highly ascended spirits, but most of the time the trans medians go into the spirit dimension where anything is possible and they're there looking for information to help others, to heal others, um, or to bring wisdom from that dimension. But sometimes it can be very scary if they don't know how to navigate that dimension. So these people definitely need to ask for protection and they really need to go through um, um, initiations in order for them to go through the spirit dimension safely and be able to return safely without being marked by anything that can become a problem later. Then we also have the healing mediums. The healing mediums are those that deal with physical issues. These people um, might do that if you have a stomach ache, you go to one of them and, and they will take away the stomach pain. If you have some type of headaches, if you have issues with, I don't know, whatever it is, anything that has to do with physical issues, the more advanced they are, the more challenging things they can handle. If they're not very advanced, they might only be able to like heal um, a stomach ache or a broken ankle or something like that. But if they're very advanced, they will be able to take away cancer and things that are very um, detrimental and that can deal, that can end up being um, terminal. So the healing meetings really have to do their work to go through different initiations in order for them to be able to um, ascend on their own and be able to heal critical um, illnesses that most people, even doctors, will not be able to heal, but they can heal it if they go through their own ascension process. We also have this, uh, the spiritual soul retrieval healers. These are people that know how to uncross, enhance. Uh, in Spanish, it's known as santiguar. This is very uncommon because the spiritual soul retrieval mediums, they have to have a life and this is one of my, my gift. And I can tell you that the, the, it's hard because you have to have a life where um, most of these people are tend to be older. They, um, they have a lot of wisdom in them. They have a lot of spirituality in them. And they also have a life, a lot of time of um, very little intimacy with others, um, if I can put it like that, they, you know, like normally they tend to be single people that that really concentrate and focus on helping others in the spirit dimension. And, and it can become very difficult to understand if this is one of your gifts because you have to go through a lot of activations, initiations in the spirit dimensions, in your dreams. This becomes your life. 
if I can put it like that. And it, it is one of the most uncommon gifts because it's very hard for someone to give up being human here in order for them to do this because these people all are always in the higher dimensions. They tend to always be in the higher dimensions. And it's almost like they give up life as a human in order for them to sacrifice themselves to help others. So we also have the scribers. These are the writing mediums. These are very common. This is one of the most common mediums. When you're writing and you and you feel like, oh, I'm on the flow here, it's because you're tapping into your writing abilities of mediumship writing abilities. Now, the intuitive mediums, anyone ha can have this gift. Intuitive is when you from your gut, you can feel and you know things. So anyone can have the gift of being an intuitive medium and very common to be a scriber. A scriber medium, I think, would be especially for those that are um, poets, writers. They, they do have those innate um, mediumship abilities within them. And let's see. I just want to make another note about the healer, uh, mediums, healers, or curanderos, shamans, as you would know them. They have the power of healing illnesses with um, their hands and prayers, specific chants, even tongue language will come out as uh, at the same time. These people tend to be like Jesus-like because Jesus, that's what he did. With faith and prayer and intention, he was able to heal. So these people tend to be, um, let's call them shamans, median curanderos, median healers, median shamans. Let's call them shamans. So these are the medicine woman, medicine men as well. Yeah, I want to talk to you as well about why the hands our hands are so important when doing healing work, whether it is to heal someone, whether it is in a shamanic trance, or if you're doing Reiki energy movement, if you're doing any type of work, you're going to see that your hands become the tool that spirit use in order for, for you to bring energy from above to heal someone in a very specific way. The hands, even the biggest clue that we have is that a lot of um, gods, goddesses, ancient goddess, goddesses, they're always showing us the hand. And even Jesus uh, in the Bible have a lot of um, in different scriptures about how the, he used the hand to heal. So, Let's talk about how this works. Normally, when you're bringing energy from the um, higher dimensions, you're tapping in yourself, tapping into the spirit dimension, the higher planes, the planes where you can tap into your spirit guides and light beings to be able to help you heal someone. You don't do it yourself but you're being used as a tool. So the tool becomes you and your hand. You mentally going with your desires, with, you, with your heart, with your mind, wanting to assist from your heart space someone that comes to you. When you do that with a pure heart, with good intentions, and you live a life that is... Um, in okay with the specific things that source will want you to be in order for you to be able to be a healer, then you can go into this to the higher dimensions to bring it's almost like a magnetic fluid that you bring down through your hands, it comes, and when you touch someone or do something specifically, you can now heal someone, you can now align the energies of someone through Reiki. You can now on like on cross and on head someone. You can physically heal. They can feel your energy flow, the energy flowing through you via your hands, because it's you're also the spirit guides that are with you know that you want to do this and you invoke them 
and they come to assist you. So at the end of the day, you're just a tool. We become a tool to help those that come to us. And with the help of Source and the Spirit Guides and the Light Beings, we can tap into the etheric fluid that brings down the healing energy in order for us to pass it through our hands to the person that is in need. I hope that makes sense because this is, you might spend a lot of time trying to figure out why your hands get tingly, why your hands get hot, why they, you know, like there's so many things that could be happening with your hands. And it's because the chakra, the energy centers within your hands are being activated for you to be able to do this when you're ready to do this. So those that have the ability to heal and use their hands, most healers are going to be using their hands. It's very rare um, unless you like, um, even if you are a sonambulistic healer, you are still using your hands because when you move the energy in the room, when you're in a trance, you're moving energy and sending energy and transmitting energy. So you will see that all healers normally will use the hand as the number one way for the information, the fluid that comes from above to be able to be transmuted and sent to the person needing the energy, the healing through the hands. So in order for you to be a good, um, let's, let's call it, Let's call it um, hand uh, mover or hand um, healer. Or if you're using your hands for any reason, let's just call it a hand healer. So what does this mean? Is that these people have to have a life of, um, they have gone through a lot and, or they haven't, and they just, they were born that way. But if they have gone through a lot, they have overcome a lot of the issues. They have done a lot of inner work on themselves. And now that they're ready to use and be activated, they really have to live a life of compassion, love, understanding. You can now be a hand mover, hand healer. Um, in Spanish, it's called pasista. Pasista because you're passing the energy. So let's call it hand mover or hand healer. It is the same thing. Anyone that is a healer that uses their hand is going to be a hand healer. Let's call it that. When you're using the hand in order to heal and you're passing energy, you cannot have anything dark in you because otherwise you're going to pass that to the people that you're healing. So it is required of you to have a life of um, compassion, love, understanding, of being sincere, of being um, always in gratitude, always moving with the energy flow of the universe. And you cannot be cursing. You cannot be having sex with different people. You have to live a life of uh, virtue and, and wisdom and compassion and you really have to have a lot of um, stability with your mind, with your physical, emotional, and spiritual centers because you have to be in alignment in order for you to be able to pass this energy without hurting yourself or others. And also, if you're not in alignment, you're really not going to be able to heal anyone, including yourself. Um, it's, it's a magnetic um, energy that is flowing through you that when you receive it in order for you to help someone, it really has, it, it will not be allowed to come through you if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And these people tend to have a life that is of service to others. You have to want to help others with a pure heart, pure intention. And if you don't have that and you're always cursing or you curse, you have negative thoughts, you're jealous or you have anger issues, you can know, uh, receive the gift of being a healer and using your hand because you're going to pass energy that is not of the highest good for someone else. So you actually could be, it could be very detrimental for you to be trying to touch people or sometimes you don't have to touch. You just move your energies in a sense, in a, your hands in a certain way. And with that, you're doing everything. So it's not like you have to touch, but with the intention, if you're sending energy to someone and you're not pure, you're also giving them 
those energies that are not of the highest good to them. So that's why spirit guides might not help you um, if they know that you're not ready for this. So you really have to be ready. You have to have a life of servitude to others. You have to want to help others, heal others. You want to have a pure heart before you really get activated. You're going to go through a lot of tests and trainings to make sure that you're ready for this because this is a big responsibility. Okay, I want to mention something again about karma before we move on to the next, um, which is going to be about the dreams and what we can get from the dreams. But before we move there, I want to talk about because in your dreams, you're going to experience a lot of information that has to do with karma. And like we mentioned, karma is the cause of love and effect. Um, the law and if the cause of, um, the law of cause and effect means that we're not going to get punished or we're not going to get in a war for doing something. But also, we only get, we only receive what we give to others. We, we, the karma is like the yin and yang. It's like a balancing of the positive and the negative aspect, if you want to see it that way. The negative, no, you can call it uh, teaching lessons um, because there's no punishment here. The, the real thing here is that we have to understand that what we give to others is what we get. So the, the, here we, we, are, we become like a mirror of what we did for others is what we're going to get. How we treat others is what we're going to get because eventually we have to balance out the energies so if we're very difficult to someone and we really think that they're just so bad so annoying and we don't understand that they're just teaching us something that is hidden in us then it's going to become very complicated because until you start taking responsibility you're not going to be able to advance in your dream state and you're not going to be able to pick up the lessons that you're getting from your dreams so this is why becoming aware of how we react and treat others is going to be the number one key lesson before we really start working and supercharging the information that we get in our dreams. So if I am very difficult to someone and I am just completely irrational and I think I have the right to be, you might get a dream that is warning you to pay attention to this. But if you don't understand that, you think you're just reliving the same thing that happened in the daytime in your dream state. So you're not able to pick up the messages because you're so focused on how somebody hurt you that you don't see how you hurt them and hurt yourself. I hope that makes sense because we're going to get into the dream states and how to get into the into learning in the dream state because when we go to a dream, it's really when we are awakened. So we want to um, go over this. I'm going to put a link to a couple of the videos that I did, uh, specifically one video on YouTube on Oya and Papa Candelo because there is a lot of information there. That will help you understand what happens when we go into the dream state. So it will be different information. Um, and also the, the video on dreams and, and general information about why we go through there, through those different stages when we dream in order for us to get healing and information. So I'm going to put that link to the, to the video, but I'm also going to talk to you, um, now about dreams and just more information that I might have not have on that video so I just want to make sure that I give it to you now so when we start um when we go to sleep we go through four stages when we go through these stages um it's important the I'm sorry five stages when we go through these five stages it's important to understand what we're doing in those stages and I'm going to say um, the sta stage one is when we're just laying down and we're still awake and we're ready to go into to dreaming, to rest. So what are the five stages of a normal dream night? So when we go to sleep, we go through five different stages. The first stage is the light sleep. This is 
one of the most important one because this is where you have to meditate and set the intention for the night. When you are going through this program, we're going to be working with a lot of intention before you go to sleep. The next stage is when you upload information to the universe, you're giving information about everything that happened during the day to the universe so the energy can be released and that you can almost like reset yourself. And then the third stage is a few minutes. It only lasts about three to five minutes. And this is where there is healing done on you in order for you to awaken the next day in a better, lighter way. So you release, you get healing of the muscles, healing of the hormones, healing of the tissues. So you really go through a major healing within those three to five minutes. The fourth stage, which is Delta, you spend about 20% of the time here. And this is when you go to, you really sleep and you go through different astral planes and you are able to dream and see information that can help you if you know that that's what's happening. It might look very normal. It might look like an everyday dream, but there is always a message. Every dream has a message. And then number five is the REM circle uh, cycle. This is where REM cycle. So this is where you go through the rapid eye movement and you go into a trance and you can um, receive activations, download, interact with spirit guides. Between the fourth and the fifth, you can do that on both. So you can really go through a lot of information here between the fourth and the fifth uh, cycle and it really depends on your level of consciousness how much are you put in how much work are you putting in how what is the intention for the night what are you trying to uh, do during your sleep which depends on your intention so you can see here why putting an intention before you fall asleep is critical for you to be able to navigate the dream stages in a more effective, a powerful way. So the intention becomes um, the key to unlocking and receiving information beyond your wild dream. Like it's, it's almost like a movie every night. Once we fall asleep, we go through the etheric plane. We also go to the astral plane, the mental plane, and planes that are even higher that we can assess at any time, depending on what we're working on. Every plane has different beings, different laws, different things happening. They could even have turbulences, depending on what's going on, and different ways do, to pick up information. So sometimes that's why you see that your ancestors will come in a dream, your spirit guides will come in a dream, and they will give you symbols and numbers and shapes, but they might not even talk to you like they talked here because in every plane, it's going to be different. When you go to the higher planes, you will see that a lot of the information is telepathically you will see that you will see symbols and numbers, but you will not hear a lot of words. So you have to pay attention and become really good at traveling the different planes in order for you to know how to pick up information from those planes. Because you will see that angels sometimes talk to you in numbers. They don't tend to come and talk to you like, normal humans um, it depends on how they want you to start interacting with them as well so an angel might talk to you in a more human way with words but in another dream if you go through a different plane they will talk to you with numbers or telepathy or shapes and symbols the thing to keep in mind is that depending on the planes that you're going through, you will see that things happen that might not make sense. For example, when you go through the direct plane, this plane tends to reflect things that are very much similar to what's happening here in the physical plane, um, in this life here now, in this terrestrial life. 
because it becomes like a mirror of what's happening here, but it's almost like a fluid mirror where it's very hard to know if you're here or in the etheric uh, field. That's why a lot of people think that they have normal dreams, but they're actually not normal. So the etheric field can be very confusing because it's picking up information from the astral, mental, and the other planes. So it becomes almost like an emergence of all the planes. And if you're not good at navigating, you might uh, spend a lot of time here and get very confused. The astral plane deals with a lot of insecurities, a lot of fears, anger, a lot of um, things that can be very um, negative as well because it's picking up all the emotions from the universe and it's up there on the astral plane. And sometimes when you go through the astral plane, you will see that when you're navigating to, through the astral plane, that you will face a lot of other people's uh, fears and emotions and jealousy and anger and even dark entities because you're there be, they become um like um a representation of what people are dreaming of so when you go through the astral plane and you are aware that you're there you might be seeing things that people are dreaming of and you're seeing it from the astral plane as someone that is observing what others are dealing with. So when you go through the astral plane to heal someone, you might tap into their insecurities, their fears, their jealousy, their anger. Even if they're into dark things, you will even see that there too, because that's where everything is reflected. All the, the inner shadows are reflected in the astral plane. This plane can be very distorted at times, depending on what is reflecting based on the on the person. The mental plane is the next plane. The mental plane is where you go through a lot of training to deal with very specifically um, things like how to um, tap into different viewpoints of where it is uh, government related, politics related, um, psychology, uh, philosophy, finances, anything that has to do with understanding the laws and principles of um, putting together thinking thoughts that come into your mind and you think that they're yours, but you actually go through the mental plane to understand those things. Sometimes the teachings are very... Um, um, imprinted in you and you become almost like an echo of what you learn there. Just like there is an astral plane that teaches about basic things, not basic, but these things are very much about how to govern, um, you can say a society or a person through the different things that they have to learn and how to or not be with in alignment, like some people are against politics because they um, somehow overcome and over go above the mental plane to reach the other dimensions, the other planes. So they might skip that. But if your life here is somehow uh, related to you working in politics, government, um, finances, accounting, anything that has to do with um, having laws and principles and and some sort of um reglament, you're gonna have to go. Most people go through the mental plane in order for you to understand laws and principles of material based things that are that affect this life here now. The the mental plane. When you go through there, you get the teachings and they're imprinted in you, just like when you go through the intuitive plane and you also get teachings about uh, astrology, um, different dimensions and the different planes and the occult, the mystery. The same thing that you get when you go through the mental plane, you get when you go through the intuitive plane and you get imprinted, downloaded with the information. 
So the more you become a healer, the more you awaken, you really want to make sure that you know how to navigate by tapping into the plane and asking with your intention to go to specific places where you can pick up information that is going to be for your highest good. This is very important because in every plane, there are challenges, turbulences, chaos that you will have to deal with if you don't know how to navigate it. I just want to make sure that you understand that it is not that the mental plane is bad because you actually go through a lot of advanced teachings here. But you, if you're a healer, you have to know what type of information you want to receive. So with your intention, you become the guide to yourself. So if you are a healer, why would you want to know about politics? It could be imprinted in you unless you are a healer that you want to bring healing to politics by going into politics and bringing a healing aspect on like uh, other people will go through politics and become greedy and controlling. So you have to be very aware of your intentions. That's what I'm saying. And before I move on, I want to talk to you about the seven planes to the right, seven planes to the left, because that's bringing me back from the mental plane. Almost like the mental plane could be tricky if, if you don't know how to navigate it. Because there are seven ment um, astral planes to the right and seven to the left. And for each one, there is seven. So, for example, when you go through the mental plane, you go through the mental plane to understand the the politics to understand government to understand education understand communication understand arts science religion culture and finances but if you go through the left ones you could grab information that is very detrimental so how to navigate is by your intention that's why they keep bringing me back uh, to the intention very from the very beginning my spirit guides were very clear about working everything with the right intentions so I could make sure that I don't go to the left side and receive information that could be very detrimental that I might think is right because I got it from the different planes because we think everything that we get from the planes is true and it's good, but sometimes it's information that is imprinted in you. And once it is imprinted, you have to work very hard to remove it. And you avoid that by going with a lot of intention and working with your heart space. So that's why I wanted to mention that. So the seven astral plane have to do, again, with the first, um, and they're not in any order, I don't think, but politics and governments, is one, edu education, learning, opportunities, advancement, right? And then we have the communication. And then we have the arts, the expression of who we are. The, the science is another one. Religion and culture is another one. And finances. So when we get to finances, it's because we have become a master manifestor of everything. It's not that it's bad. It's that we have become a master manifestor. So the the planes can be to the right or it could be to the left if you go to the left planes you could gr be grabbing information that can be greedy because you want to obtain so much finances and, and abundance but you want to do it in a way that could be detrimental to others so if you're going through education you could be pulling ed education to deal with dark entities if you go through governments you could be uh, getting information on the left plane that deals with controlling others in a way that is detrimental to society. So anything that is positive can also be obtained from the negative planes, which are the seven to the left. The different turbulences that we will find in the different planes, is gonna, some of them are going to be out of your uh, control, but some of them are within your control. For example, if there are wars and... Things like COVID influencing the etheric plane, that is out of your control because you don't have control at uh, the end of the day of what happens with something like um, the, the, the war that is going on in, in Iraq, right? You don't have control over COVID. So that is 
um, in the direct plane and you don't have control. So these are things also that could be influenced by natural catastrophes that you also don't have control. This could be also something that might be going on with um, contamination in the air. So anything that you really don't have, these are big things that you don't have control of that are influencing the and challenging, molesting, penetrating, and creating turbulences within the etheric plane. Now, in the astral plane, these are things that are caused by community crimes, depression, uh, a lot of community-wise or country-wise or planet-wise anger, fear, um, also the need to um, avenge something, to make sure that someone pays for something. So having those feelings can affect tremendously the astral plane and it could become very difficult to navigate if you're not trained in how to navigate the astral plane. Also in the astral plane is when dark things come through and can um, be uh, used um, to bother someone in their dream state. For example, if you have Things that are bothering you in your sleep stay, they could be coming from the astral plane sent to you via someone, or you might be going through training to know how to discern energy, and therefore you're going through the astral plane to tap into the dark energy so you can learn how to discern energy. So it doesn't necessarily mean someone sent it to you. It could mean that your soul decided to go through the training so you can know how to help others. Um, these things, the the astral turbulences have a lot of effect on our dreams and our sleep because it is the number one way that we can tap into those um, darker energies to learn how to work with them, how to discern the energy to avoid them and how to remove them from our clients. In the, in the mental plane, now I'm talking about the mental plane, these are... Um, one, the mental plane is the one that you have the most control of because it's you uh, tapping into the mental plane. And when you go there and you are not, you don't have a pure heart, you have a lot of anger, you have a lot of jealousy, you might have a lot of dark things going on inside of you, a lot of shadows that you need to work on. You go into the mental plane and you have, uh, you feel separated from source. You have a lot of things to work on. Then you're going to have a lot of turbulences when you deal and you go through the mental plane. And you are not going to be able to access um, a lot of the, of the higher planes until you work through all the shadows. So the mental plane becomes almost like your main challenge to know if you are on the right path or not. It's also important to notice that if you're doing a lot of drugs, alcohol, any um, things that are detrimental, if you are uh, dealing with a lot of arrogance and you don't have humility because humility is one of the core, um, you can say, principles that we have to learn as a healer in order for us to work with our a heart center in order for us to really tap into the higher dimension. So if you are not working in alignment with humility and open heart and having freedom of any of addition, then you're going to have a hard time going through the mental plane and the higher planes. And just to do a quick recap, so when you go through the different planes, if you are able to tap into the intuitive plane, this is when you become activated. And when you become activated, you are now able to tap and get information from many different places. When you go into the higher planes, is when you meet um, very highly ascended beings that can guide you to activate the rest of your spiritual gifts. So it becomes your playground. So it is with the intuitive plane that we go through, um, you can call the mystery school when you go through the intuitive plane. 
but you might ha- you might go through the intuitive plane and still have challenges with the etheric, astral, mental, emotional planes because sometimes it's almost like you go through the mystery school to learn and activate things in order to help you overcome the turbulences that you're dealing with in the other planes if you're one of the chosen ones. Now, I this is just a side note. I know that some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but I want to say it anyways. Because what you will know, I have noticed is that when I go through near cemetery, I feel a lot of pain. When I go through, when I go to a hospital, it's very gloomy because a lot of pain has been released there before people die, or a lot of people go there with a lot of pain. So there are energy imprints in those places that, for someone that is very sensitive to energy, is going to be able to pick up on those memory imprints and almost become like a vortex of energy that is just pure sadness and pain. So when you want to activate and work on your dreams, and this is very hard if you work in a hospital, because when you're done working in those places that have dealt with a lot of people that have been in pain, suffering, and or dying, you want to make sure that you have a ritual for grounding your energy even before you get to your house. Otherwise, you're bringing those energies with you to your house, especially if something is able to attach to you. That's why you will see that a lot of people, even though doctors that have make a lot of money, they um, sometimes bring things to their homes that they don't even know what it is and they can become very depressive. It's not because they work long hours. It's because they're not doing the, the rituals to release energy the moment that they leave work. So, when you work um, in places that have a lot of suffering, sometimes you will pick up energies, you will feel it, you will feel it around you. And what that means is that before you go to sleep, you really have to do some type of, even if it's a five minutes meditation, just to release those energies so you don't bring that into your dream state and therefore you don't tap into the negative astral planes because you it could be very disturbing. So you want to be aware of the places that you go to in the daytime before you go to sleep and release anything that needs to be released before you start working in your dream state. It's in your dream state that you will pick up a lot of information, especially if you are awakening your spiritual abilities, tapping into the unknown you will be able to pick up information beyond what you can even comprehend now. And sometimes you will receive information, but if you're not ready to understand it and you don't have the right capacity, the right um, expansion of consciousness, you will receive information that maybe it will become clear months, weeks, years from now. So it the type of information that you pick up, you can pick up a lot, but if you're not ready to understand it, it's just going to store to the side until you're ready to comprehend. So when you go into the different planes, everybody might be receiving the same information, just like the way that I received the Awakening the Healer program. Somebody else may have received the same information. It is up to them to put it into practice. And I, the way I understood it is filtered through my own awareness, my own uh, consciousness. But if I wasn't ready to understand the program, I would have put it to the side like I did initially for the first month until I was able to understand it. And it took me like a month to decide to do it because... I, you know, it was going to be a lot of work and I didn't know if I was ready to do this and comprehend everything. So I put it off for a month before I decided to do something. But just like when you go to the dream stay, you might get a circle, you might get light codes, you might get information that is very big and formulas to create things. But if you're not ready to understand, you will leave it to the side until you're ready to understand. And when you're ready to understand, then the message gets activated again and you have that aha moment. That's when you have 
magic happen because the information that you have been grabbing from your dream state and trances and visions, now you understand it. So once you understand, you're ready to put it into practice. So it's very it becomes very fun to go and sleep because you know you can receive so much. In order for you to go through the dream state and really benefit from dreaming and receive information from the higher planes, you really have to work on your ego, have to work on releasing fear, have to work on um, releasing and letting go of any negativity, any anger and controlling issues. You have to let go of trying to hurt other people because they hurt you. You have to let it go. You have to work with honesty and sincerity and compassion and love. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access the real higher state of information that you can. You might think you are receiving really good information. And I'll give you an example. I have someone that I know that I have worked with to help him for almost two years now. And this person was very aggressive, very dangerous, very uh, egocentric, but he was receiving information from other dimensions and he thought he was connecting to very powerful light beings. And in reality, he was connecting to negative forces that were tricksters. And they were giving him information that almost, almost they started giving him information at the beginning that was true so he can confirm that he was working with the real ones, the real light beings. But later on, that information changed and he will get very aggressive. He will get very angry and hurt his partner. And he became a very vicious cycle. And he thought he was connecting to ancient um, Egyptian pharaohs and gods and goddesses, when in reality he was really connecting to very negative dark forces. That's why you have to work from a pure heart in order for you to obtain the right information. Otherwise, you could be dealing with a lot of negative energies and confuse them for the positive energies because you haven't worked with your heart center to really tap into the highest form, the highest being. Because when you work from the heart space, the negative energies cannot come near you. They have a hard time coming near you unless they attack you. And if they attack you, you know you cannot trust them. So it is only with your pure heart that you can really access the highest and the truth information that is available to you. It's very important to work with the heart space. And I think I'm going to leave it there because they're guiding me just to hone in into the fact that only when you work with a pure heart, you can really tap into the best and the most, uh, like the most beautiful information there is in order for you to understand unity consciousness, in order for you to become a true healer. Otherwise, you could be dealing with something that is um, has a custom and comes to trick you, but they're really of the dark. That's why working with your heart space is the number one and the most essential part of you tapping into the higher planes.